Good morning, Detective. You slept well? I'm afraid I did not. I was hoping for at least a moment of pleasant slumber, but alas, it was not to be. Finding the Major's killer is the only thing that will put my mind at ease. In that case, Detective, what can I do to help? In that snow? If someone was out there, we'd have another body on our hands. I realize how strange it sounds. I would not believe it myself if I had not seen it with my own eyes. Staff have reported seeing things in the dark before, but it always just turns out to be shadows. It was likely just your mind playing tricks. I'm afraid our Lizzie is not well. I think the events of yesterday were too much for her. We'll have to just make do without her this morning. As Wordsworth once stated, rest and be thankful. Perhaps a chance of peace and relaxation will work wonders. She is currently eating breakfast alone in the dining room. It's how she prefers it. But if you wish to speak with her now... I would, but I'm afraid I found this morning that the telephone lines aren't working. The snow continued through the night and must have damaged them. Even if we could use the telephone, I don't think anyone would be able to reach us. In that case, it will be up to myself alone to solve the case. I'll let you know if anything changes. But until some of the snow clears, enough for the carriages to arrive, we are snowed in. Taken care of. Master Dremir and his brother, after sobering up, helped me move him into the cellar. Best place for the time being. Très bien. I imagine there is no reason for anyone to go down there. Besides me, no one. Once this snow clears, we will be able to move him from the house. Your assistance has been most valuable as always. Good morning, Detective. I hope you were comfortable last night. Bonjour, Mademoiselle. The room was more than pleasant, merci. I'm afraid my mind was not in a state to enjoy it to its full potential, though. I can't imagine any of us slept soundly last night. Hopefully guilt will be weighing heavily on someone's shoulders this morning. I'm sorry if I was not much help last night, Detective. On the contrary, your inside knowledge of the guests was of great help to my investigation. But there are many more questions that require answers. His position? You mean about him living here? Oui. Even in a house this size, you must see a lot of each other. I enjoyed having him here. When I was away with Gideon, it was comforting to know Maman was not alone. Although, his work with Mr. Da Silva has kept him away from the house of late. What can you tell me about their relationship, working or otherwise? There is not much to tell, only that there is no love lost between them. He was always quite private about his work. I know that he was helping Mr. Da Silva with some safety matters. I found a check addressed to the Major from Monsieur Da Silva. It noted security consulting. Ah, that's right, security. With his military training, he helped Mr. Da Silva prepare for any trouble with the strikes. A development? Oh, detective, I knew I could count on you. It may not be the news you had wished for, though. 
Another letter has been found. Addressed to me? I don't know how much more I can take of this. Pardonnez-moi, mademoiselle. Although it has been written in the same manner, using similar phraseology, it was not sent for your eyes, rather, the Major's. Or at least that is how it seems. I'm sorry, Detective, I don't understand. It is addressed to him or not? I found it in the Major's study yesterday while conducting my preliminary search. Whether he is the author of the letter or the recipient, I am still yet to discover. Heavens no! He could not do that! You did not hesitate for a moment. Why would he do such a thing? A and then to send a letter to himself? It just doesn't make sense. Merci for your time, mademoiselle. You are, to a detective, what an umbrella is to a traveler on a wet day. Useful? Exactement. Bonjour, Monsieur Damir. Detective Poirot, how are you? The truth, Monsieur. With each step towards uncovering the blackmailer, I am thrown two steps back as to the identity of the Major's killer. Is there something I can help you with? Archibald came to me and asked for my help in the matter. My brother and I dealt with it. Merci for your help. It is a job that only the professionals should have to undertake. It's a job that had to be done. Although it may have affected my brother more than I. How so? At the sight of the body, the color drained from his face. Once we had reached the cellar, Zakaria took himself straight off to bed, without even a good night. Felix and Madame Vandenbosch are the only ones with keys, as far as I'm aware. Oh, and Archibald. I'm sure I heard Felix asking him to return something to it once. I have not seen him since last night. I'm sure he will have been fine after a good night's sleep. He does not need his younger brother checking in on him. Perhaps that is exactly what he requires. I'm not sure what he told you yesterday, detective. But he's a big boy. He can look after himself. I worry that may not be the case, monsieur. His time in the war came up in conversation more than once during our conversations. He's still talking about it. I thought talking to the doctor would have stopped all of that. Merci, monsieur. Comtesse, I wonder if I could ask you some questions. That is it, detective? No small talk? No inflating of one's ego? I am afraid not, Countess. With the murderer still loose in the house, my mind is rather preoccupied. Well then, detective, perhaps I can be of some assistance. Comment, madame? I thought you might like to know what I found on the Major's body. That certainly piqued your interest. A man has been murdered, and you find it acceptable to fool around and joke! Oh, please, detective. Do you really think so little of me? Archibald asked for my assistance. He knows of my medical training from my days as a nurse, and I thought I would be able to help. Even if it has been some years. It was not his place to grant you access to the body. I shall remember to keep my assistance to myself next time. The single stab wound, which you no doubt already knew. The knife was held in their right hand. I would say their predominant hand. Judging by the depth of the wound, I would say there was no great force put into the strike. More a sign of defense than attack. If I had to say what weapon was used, 
a small sharp knife or dagger. I understand it may be difficult for one to keep such information to yourself, but I ask you to try. Your involvement has already tainted my investigation. <laughs> you are welcome, detective. S'il vous plaît, Comtesse, keep this information to yourself. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. What a revelation! If it will help you find the Major's killer, of course. When he returned from the war, he was a different man. Everything became about what he had seen. I cannot speak from experience, but I can only imagine the horrors he must have witnessed. The first weeks he would wake in the night, screaming. I found him one night, cowering behind the desk in the study. When I tried to help him out from beneath it, well, that was the first time I had ever feared for my life. That is not why you two are no longer close? And not at all, detective. We were always very different in nature. While I had always wanted to follow an academic path, Zakaria was more of a free spirit, or at least as free as our father and the laws would allow. And yet, he ended up in the military, Quite the contrast. Our father demanded that he at least try to do something with his life. And when some of his friends joined the army, he signed up with them. It wasn't long before he moved out from the family home after his return from the army. I always assumed that he had put the war and everything that came with it behind him and was moving on. But now I see that is far from the truth.
Aha. Oh. Huh. Hmm. Bonjour, madame. May I offer my condolences for your loss? Thank you, detective, but they are not necessary. What can I do for you? I was hoping you would be prepared to answer some questions. If I must. I'm sure you're aware he was not the easiest man to get along with. His hot temper made him a number of foes. A hot temper is reason enough to kill a man. His mouth often acted before his brain. Perhaps someone had grown tired of dealing with it. Seeing as I heard Mr. Becker's in what I would describe as an unnecessarily loud exchange of words yesterday, he would be my first suspect. You heard them yourself? How could I not? The volume they were shouting at, I could hear them from the study in my room. You did not think it fitting to tell me this yesterday? I didn't think Felix was going to wind up dead and a murderer loose in my house. My apologies, detective. I assume you are talking about the supposed blackmail letter. Oui, madame. You know of it? It arrived shortly after the first. Rather coincidental, if you ask me. I'm not sure I understand what you're trying to say, madame. He no doubt had secrets hidden away. But do you honestly think Felix had anything of value to his name worth threatening him for? Perhaps you should enlighten me. Well, he was here, living in my house, eating my food, prepared by my staff. Does that answer your question, detective? I wouldn't put it past him to have written it himself, in the hopes of getting some sympathy from me. And the other letters? He probably wrote those, too. If Angeline paid the first, that would have given him the money to pay the second letter. He is the White Knight, saves the day, and expects to live here happily ever after. What is it you wish to know? You two have been friends for some time now, and while I do not mean to pry, has your relationship only... If you are trying to insinuate that Mr. De Silva and I are running around like schoolchildren, you could not be further from the truth. He was friends with my husband, for goodness sake. Oui, I understand they worked together. Investments, if I am correct. Mr. De Silva was the voice of reason that my husband should have listened to more often, instead of throwing our money at businesses that were already on the verge of bankruptcy. Merci, madame. I shall not bother you any further.
हाँ हाँ आहा Bonjour madame. You must be the wonderful cook. Wonderful and modest, sir. I am Rihanna. My taste buds thank you for the ravishing meal last night. It has been some time since I ate so well. Glad to hear it, sir. Uh, S'il te plaît, madame. A detective is fine. In that case, mademoiselle is fine for me, and I will ignore your presumption of marriage. Très bon, mademoiselle. That's right. I've seen staff come and go, but the house always needs a trustworthy cook. I agree. But if I was to eat what you prepare every day, I fear I may be the size of la maison. Not a bad thing, detective. You could do with some meat on your bones. Well, with the snow still not clearing, we may be stuck here for the weekend. Perhaps I should look to adjust my pantalon buttons. I did. Monsieur Archie told me what had happened. Bruises can swell fast, so I took him some ice to bring it down. How was the major when you saw him? Grumpy, as always. I suppose one would not take kindly to being punched as he was. Punched or not, he was as ungrateful as ever. I shall not keep you any longer. Merci, mademoiselle. Is there something I can help you with, detective? You have got the wrong end of the stick, detective. Maman has snapped at him recently, but it was nothing more than that. It was something to do with the letter. I heard them in the library before Maman shouted and he stormed out of the room past me. Could it have been the blackmail letter that instigated their argument? Why would Maman be upset with him over the letter? Madame is of a very different opinion from yourself regarding his connection with the letters. She believes him to be the author. That is what she told you? She has always been one to make a quick, if not rash, decision, but she cannot truly believe that. I don't recall telling him directly. I did not want Maman to find out it had been paid. If he knew, surely she would. Madame believes he may have been behind all the letters, and taking your payment of the first, then used it to pay the second and be the hero in you and your mother's eyes. I never knew Maman had such an imagination. Where would she get a story like that from? That is a question I was hoping you may be able to answer. You have met him? Do you really think he's capable of such a devious plan? It is a plan only the most crooked and underhanded could create. Is that the Major? I am not so sure. 
I shall not keep you any longer. Merci, mademoiselle. to become clearer. Is there something I can help you with, detective? I'm afraid it had been that way for some time. Maman is not forthcoming with her emotions, as I'm sure you are aware. But I could tell she had not been happy with their arrangement for the last few months. What gave you that impression? There was not one particular thing that she expressed. It was just the way she spoke to him and of him when he wasn't present. I shall not keep you any longer. Merci, mademoiselle. Whatever you need, Detective. Certainly, Detective. Mm. Mm. 